morning. It's been a minute since you guys have seen me here on this channel, but um, today I'm going to do a mock setup. Uh, Sierra of Sierra Crafties Creations uh, and myself are doing a market September 12th here in Michigan. Um, and anyone who's from Michigan or the Midwest around this area knows that at September it could be 50s or it could be 80s in September. So really not sure what the weather's gonna be. We have a lot of leftover winter stock from our previous markets. Um, and I've been working on a lot of towel toppers. Sierra's been working on um, cup cozies and like the little ice cream cozies. And she's got some little like stuffed amigurumi like candy corns. Um, I have pumpkins, so we have some stuff like that. Um, but we just want to be prepared for the weather to not be the coldest. Therefore, we don't expect as much of our scarves and hats and stuff like that to sell. Obviously, still want to display them just in case. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. I want to share with you guys about a canopy company, um, that sent me a canopy and I'm going to put it together and, um, kind of show you guys what I really love about this canopy. There's one thing in, in particular that I really, really love that has to do with airflow in your tent because uh, anyone who's done a craft show on a hot day knows that if you put your tent walls up on a hot day, um, it's like a, like a hot box and it's so hot and there's no wind, there's no airflow. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. And I have to go let my dog in, Tatum's out over there. Those of you who don't know, um, Zoe, my senior golden passed away. Um, and I have another puppy, Tatum. He was uh, born the day after Zoe passed away and a day before Zoe's birthday. So I felt like he was the puppy that was meant to be mine. I felt like Zoe was sending me a sign. Um, so he's here. I don't know if he's gonna come outside with me or not, but uh, anywho, let's uh, get him inside and gather some of our stuff together and go put up the tent. Look at the baby. Okay, I gotta go inside. I'll come get you, I'll come get you. So I just wanted to show you guys what tent exactly I have. Um, and I got it from Quince Tent. So this is the company I got it from. So I will share their link below for you guys. And this 10 by 10 uh, pop-up tent. And I got the privacy tent. This is the tent that I got right there, the privacy tent. So I'm gonna open this up, put it together, and show you guys all the things it has to offer and what the one main function this tent has that I really, really love. So anytime you set up a canopy tent for the first time, um, they do not come with the cover attached on the canopy. The frame is separate. So you have to start to open the frame and then when the frame is partially open, that's when you put the canopy on the top. And then every time after that, you can leave the canopy on the tent when you collapse it, which is really, really nice. I've only had to put mine on once um, on my other tent. I've taken it off one time to uh, wash and or dry it out before but usually if you just pop the tent back open it will dry your canopy up if it gets wet if you were out in the rain or anything like that um, so I'm going to start doing this on the instructions I'm an instruction follower you guys but it says two people my boyfriend Kyle is out golfing with friends right now so I'm doing this all on my own so this is <laughs> this is good news for anyone who does craft shows and you don't have helpers that often. If you have to put a tent up by yourself, you are more than capable of doing it. Um, it can be a little tricky. The good news is also at craft shows, usually there are other people who are like setting up and going around and if you make friends with your neighbors, a lot of times uh, if they see you struggling, they'll help you out. So don't stress too much about it, but um, this looks like it's gonna be pretty easy to assemble and do. So I'm gonna do that now and you guys can watch in a time lapse. Thank you. 
Okay, guys, so I have pretty much the entire tent set up and one wall. Um, Tatum is out here with me, causing trouble. Um, so I guess let me just show you the canopy. I have four walls, so there are more walls over there. I think I'm only gonna put two up today um, for the display I have in mind. I'm gonna show you guys why, but I'm gonna show you why I love this one thing in specific. Um, and that is because it allows airflow. Because I am telling you, it gets so hot during craft shows sometimes. Um, I've done summer shows outside and I've had it where I was sweltering in my tent and it's not fun. Customers don't want to come in. They don't want to be hot. Um, they see your tent and they think shade, perfect. I'm gonna go get some shade and they come in your tent and it is like a sauna in there, right? They, they do not like that at all. Um, but having your sides protects you from wind. Um, it can protect you from direct sunlight, uh, protects anyone from stealing your stuff, uh, theft. Uh, while at my craft shows, I've never had a problem with it. I have known other vendors who have had problems with it, but if all of your tent sides are covered, um, where you don't have your attention, let's just say your booth, but your uh, checkouts in the front here. Um, if your tent is covered, um, on the back corners of your tent, no one can reach in and just grab something off your table without you noticing. So I think that that's really, really important, um, perk to think about um but yeah so this right here you the good thing is you can close them so they're not permanently open you guys saw me open them up which also means that if there's rain or extreme wind or i don't know maybe it's cold and you're actually trying to keep heat in maybe you're doing a late fall early winter market um, in one of the colder states and you want to block off the wind you can just close that window right up um, also obviously helps keep bugs out um, more so if you just had a hole in the side of your tent. So I really, really like that. I will say this frame is, is pretty light. So uh, if you have to carry your frame, it also comes with a carrying case. You guys see me open it out of that in the beginning that has wheels on it. So if I was gonna have to travel pretty far and I couldn't just drive my car right up to where I needed to put together my booth space, this would be a great tent for that because it is pretty lightweight. Uh, it does come with stakes to stake it into the ground. So if you are at a location in which you can stake stuff to the ground if you're on grass or something like that, I would definitely suggest doing that just in case. Um, otherwise they sell sandbags and other like weight like tents weights um, on Amazon. Uh, if uh, Quinstent also sells those items, I will make sure that I link them below for you guys. Um, I have used things like jugs of water and bungee cords to weigh down my tents before. You don't have to go out and buy anything super expensive. Um, but if it's a windy day, there's no wind here. Normally it's so windy at my house. I'm actually shocked there's no wind today. So I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to weigh it down or anything like that. I am gonna put up one more side. Two of the sides have windows and two of the sides do not. So um, I think I'm actually gonna put up the second window side and I'm just gonna put it up here on this side here. Normally you do it opposite sides to get that cross breeze, um, but because I'm only putting two sides up, I'm gonna use both my window sides. You could do the same thing if you got this exact same tent. Um, one suggestion I would have that is if you are getting a tent specifically for a craft show, I would suggest you get it in white. This is their beige color. Um, and it's the tent that I got, so definitely gonna try and use it, but I know a lot of craft shows require you to have white tents. So if you are going out and buying your first tent and you have an option of getting different colors, uh, get white. Obviously, if you already have a tent, you gotta work with whatever color you have, um, and hopefully either the shows will make an exception for you, um, or maybe you'll be lucky enough to find shows that don't require a white tent, but I just wanted to make sure that that is like a really common thing in our industry that they require white tents, so. Yeah, I'm going to put the other side up and then we will get to the fun part, which is uh, setting up a booth display. Okay guys, in the time of social distancing, I decided to do a setup that's a little bit different than how I normally do my setups. Sorry guys, I have <laughs> my, this is the most exposed I've ever been doing one of these videos. I, I guess I could have put my other tent side up 
and blocked from the road or rotated my tent, but this is where we're at, so this is where we're keeping it. So sorry for any awkward pauses that happen due to people coming by. I decided to do two tables. I have one right here and then one straight down there. Um, Tablecloths, I just around there. Um, note to self, note to anyone who uses, I use sheets for my tablecloths from Walmart. You guys probably know that. This one has like some unidentified stain on it. Um, so it needs to be washed. Um, I should be washing these between every craft show or at least every other craft show, honestly, especially if I have ones that are outside. So I'm gonna, all of my sheets that I use for tablecloths are going in the wash after this video is done. Um, but this is what the inside of my tent is. We are in the world of social distancing right now and it saddens my heart, but that's the way that it is. Um, and as of right now, I don't think my state has any social distancing guidelines and stuff like that that are requirements but obviously there's still people who have those fears that we need to be respectful of and mindful of and the fact that guidelines could change so with that in mind i'm just doing a setup where you would sit inside of your booth and customers would shop on the exterior of your booth okay um this would be a good one if you had a corner spot or if your tents were spaced out. I had an event where the tents were spaced out every other, instead of everyone being side by side by side, they actually put 10 feet between every tent to allow space for shoppers to walk through and socially distance. Um, which means that shoppers can sh could have shopped th potentially three sides of our tent. Um, you could even do an additional table over here that went down like this. Um, and just how like the front of that table and that the width of that table take up the whole side um, You would stick the table the front edge right there and it would probably go down to here I think these are about eight foot tables seven foot tables. Maybe if I had to guess um, Since this is a 10 by 10 tent But I'm leaving this gap here and this would be an entry and exit point for you That is one thing I always do I always lock myself in when I am at craft shows, it makes it really hard. Another thing about this tent, the other two sides that go up actually have a zipper right down the middle. So if I set this tent up per like the diagram that they normally set, there's a where I did window side and then I did a window side on this side and that back one was just their regular straight wall. It has a zipper right in the middle. So hypothetically, if I put my booth space in the back corner and I needed to get out, as long as I had room behind me, which at a lot of craft shows you do, you could just use the zipper to get out behind instead of having to walk, try and like walk around all of your stuff. So that's another benefit. Another thing is if it's raining or windy or stuff like that and you put up all of the tent sides, you can just unzip the front and then kind of like pull them back a little bit, like tie them open with yarn or um, if they have, I don't know if they have straps on this one my other tent has straps to hold the sides apart so customers can see that you're open they can come inside but they're protected from the elements so when i've had a rainy craft show i got a lot of customers in my tent just because i was one of the few people who had sides to my tent and they were protected from all of like the snow and not the snow the rain and like the wind and it was it was pretty bad um but i am going to go get my stuff and i'm going to start setting up some display stuff I'm gonna do a time lapse for you guys, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna ex show it all to you and then explain why I did some things the way I did. Uh, maybe even get some other tips. This is like my favorite part. You guys know I love craft show displays. If I could just set up people's booths for a living, I would do that. I love setting it up more than I love the actual craft show. Both are rewarding. Um, one just has my heart more. So I will see you guys in a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm excited.
So I'm gonna show you guys my display that I have set up real quick. Um, this is like a very small portion of my stock. A lot of my stock is in tubs in the house, buried, and I do not want to get it out right now because I have it packed away and in, in like an organized manner and me and Sierra have our craft show in like a couple weeks. So I'm gonna leave that there, but I wanted to show you what I do have. So the first thing I have is this little scrunchy tower. So this is actually just like two pieces, like, I don't know, one by six or one by eights that are nailed together. And then they just have holes drilled through and wooden dowels like placed in. So it's a super simple, something you could DIY at home. Um, and I put it on top of a lazy Susan that I just had in my kitchen so that this could be something that customers could come over and rotate. Ideally, I would have like enough colors to like fill in at least three of every color, um, but I don't. <laughs> so this is what I have for that, but this way customers can come up here, spin it around, take a look. Um, this sign would say something about scrunchies. You wanna make sure that your signage is pretty clear. Maybe stick it up here, maybe even glue it to the top. Um, of this display unit and say like scrunchies I, I do my scrunchies uh six dollars each or two for ten so if they buy two it's five dollars each um and you could just stick this up here and then say like spin me um there are more on the other side or maybe if you did like i have uh keychains somewhere in my stock um i could put like keychains on the other side um, but I would just put whatever decide, side has like my most cohesive display out. Um, you'd want your signage for it. And then I always do this at my craft shows when I can to display all of the colors because sometimes people will be like, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a specific color. And I'm like, this is all the colors I have. Um, cause sometimes they mess up your display trying to pull stuff off and look for certain colors. Um, or they take it out and then they put it back in the wrong spot. And sometimes it can get a little frustrating having to constantly like, fix your display so if you do things like this where you they can see like these are the only colors they offer if the color they want isn't there they won't go through picking all of your stuff which will be nice so this is the next little section of my display right here you can see that i have scarves um i have these like little mannequin heads these are actually sierra's um i think she got them on amazon i will try and link them into my craft fairs amazon uh list so that's below. I have a ton of display stuff in this Amazon list, you guys. Like anything from crates to chairs to um, displays that I want to have, displays I already own. So I got some things at like a Yonkers going out of business sale and a few other businesses that were closing. I've gotten a lot of my market displays from those. Like I tell you guys to keep checking your papers, check Facebook, look for local businesses that are closing and then go in and see, they usually sell their display pieces. So just go in and see what display pieces they're selling and um, if they're a good price, snatch them up. They're great for craft shows. Just make sure that they are lightweight, portable, collapsible, that you can fit them in your vehicle, right? You don't want to go buy a whole shelving unit and then be like, this is what I'm going to use for craft shows. And then you have no way to transport it. And it weighs hundred pounds and it's just a mess, right? So make sure they're collapsible and stuff like that. But I'll see if I can link that in my Amazon list. Um, so I show a scarf around this. Normally I have like, I have like wooden dowels with like a wooden base and uh, like a yarn head on it. And that's what I do my scarves and hats on normally, but those are packed away somewhere. So I had some serious displays, so I just used them. Um, so you show them the scarf, show them that it can be worn, how it's how it's supposed to be worn. It's meant to be worn double layered. And then I have them folded right here. Um, ideally, I would have like a little signage placard or something right there or right here so people know how much all of these things cost. This hat, I didn't have any other hats that were like this. So that's why this hat is on its own display because I couldn't stack it with these beanies because it didn't match any of those. So when you have like an odd man out, like where you just have like one or two beanies that like, they're really cute and you still wanna charge full price for them, but maybe it's a color you're not using anymore, or maybe it's just a design that you were trying out a new design for craft show specifically. And then you're like, okay, like I tried it. I don't love it. So I'm not gonna make it for the rest of my market stock, but you still wanna sell it. Put them on the mannequin heads because then you can, um, it'll be separated from the rest of your display. The rest of your display will still look cohesive, but you don't have to deal with um, trying to blend it in and you don't have to put it in your discount bin or anything like that because it's a perfectly good hat I just only made one of them, right? Um, and then right here 
sorry, I'm gonna get you guys in the shade. Right here is my pumpkin tower. So originally I had this just sitting on the table, um, but people shop at eye level. Sorry guys, I keep like tilting this on. People shop at eye level. That's like, studies have shown that people are more likely to buy things if they're at eye level versus down at the grocery store. So when you go to the grocery store, everything that's at eye level, either they paid to be at that level, or those are things that Myers, they know, Myers, Walmart, Target, whatever, know that they can like upsell someone on. So they put those at eye level because you're more likely to buy them because you're gonna see them. So these pumpkins right here, I'm pretty tall. I'm I'm five foot nine. So these pumpkins, the top tier is like right at my eye level. Um, someone like Ashley, who's four foot nine, this stuff right here would be right at eye level for her. Um, when people have to look down at things, they're they're not as likely to look down. They're not as likely to buy. So um, I decided to put this on a crate. Just because you have crates doesn't mean that you have to like for this one. Like I had to fill it with something. Um, or whatever you can literally just use it as a stacking block. I have stacked mirrors on top of crates I've stacked a lot of things on top of crates um, just to give it more height And so that makes this whole pumpkin display pop. I put it on the corner because it seemed like a good like corner piece um, And then it also leaves all this table room in front So if I had all of my stock out, I'd have a lot more hats here signage and stuff like that but right now i just did my pumpkins i have three different size pumpkins i have large medium and small so i put larges on the bottom mediums in the middle tier and small on top and then i would like tape i normally tape um signage to this little guy right here and it would say like small pumpkins i don't even know what my small ones are six dollars medium pumpkins ten dollars large pumpkins 12 right um, so I would tape a sign that says that and then I would maybe put little s stickers or uh, Maybe I have this like vintage like label maker that makes vintage looking labels I could just write small medium large because when I've done my pumpkins before I usually have them on like a tower or some type of other display and People are like I don't know which ones are mediums and which ones are larges and they're super confused and they bring this one up there and they're like Okay, ten dollars. I'm like, no, that one's a large. It's twelve, and they're so confused. But if you can separate it in tiers or maybe separate baskets, if you have anything that's like this that you have multiple sizes and they're different price ranges, um, anything with with tiers or separate baskets or maybe even separate ends of your table, and just like put all the smalls here, all the mediums down there, and all the larges down there, that would be best. And then over here, we have. Let's flip this camera around our last portion of the display and this is just all the beanies that were in um I, these are not no ones that i normally uh, i think these are ones that i like trying to put in my discount bin or just like sell um because i don't have a ton of them and they don't necessarily match our color palette that we're going for so this again was a hat that i only had one of these hats so he got put on the mannequin with a palm i have a sign this is for the bun beanies right here all my bun beanies are in a display i really like when you can do hats like this in a crate and people can go like that through them again none of these colors are really part of my color scheme so normally i would not put those within this stuff because they don't match my color palette i would probably put these over by the scrunchies since the scrunchies are much more colorful um but for the sake of this display if you guys can imagine a cohesive color palette that's what i'd be going for i'm really excited to show you guys what me and sierra's craft show ends up looking like because we worked really hard in keeping our color palette cohesive and our patterns cohesive our display is going to look so good and i'm really excited for it um but i put a mirror up here so people can see themselves in the mirror and then i have all of these um beanies these are all the same types of addy beanies that i have here and then i tried to do them color wise um that one's got some gold in it and then i tried to just do the colors where it looked nice and then that way if someone bought just this one it would still look nice if they bought just that one it would still look nice and then i put the two black ones over here because i had the table space on them normally i would attach palms you can see that me and sierra had sewn snaps onto everything these palms are detachable so i'd have a big sign that says detachable palms so people know they can remove them to wash them um and it's just really really nice while i'm talking about palms and sierra sierra has a really awesome palm course if you want to make your own palms instead of buying them um that's what i took i had a craft show where i ran out of palms and i had actually ordered them from sierra and i only had like a few like two days before my craft show and i was like 
she's not gonna be able to get me palms in time i need more palms like i have to have more palms for this craft show and i got her course i took the course and that day i went to hobby lobby and um got um fur i knew exactly what kind of fur i was looking for because she talks about how to know if you're buying good fur or not um and I made my own palms and that really saved me for that craft show and her palm course is really awesome too because if you ever wanted to sell palms if you wanted to make and sell them she shows you how to do that she shows you how to package them to sell them she shows you what she prices her palms at where to buy new furs she even shares links to like her best selling furs um and she's even updated it two or three times since she released it with more links to more furs that have become popular like the rainbow fur and stuff like that um so I'll share my affiliate link for her course below if you guys are interested in that but anywho back to the course Sierra and I have a course on craft fairs um, we have a course on craft fairs we have a course on shipping and we have a course on something else that I can't remember but anywho um, I just wanted to share about this craft fair course specifically since that's what this video is about. We share everything about how to find good markets, um, how to even find out about markets in your area, uh, what things to include in your application. Um, we talk about obviously table setup and design. That's a big thing. That's one of my favorite things to talk about and I give a lot of hints and tips and things. Um, we tell you how to pick out color palettes, how to decide what types of patterns to use in your craft show. Um, lots of things like that like honestly anything you could possibly want to know from start to finish to a craft show we talk about in that course um i will give you guys a coupon code it will be below for 10 percent off if you're interested um because i love my youtube family and it's been a hot minute since i've done a video so i will put that coupon code below for you guys so you can check that out as well um again thank you for quintence for sending me this canopy i really really like it i think it's gonna get a lot of use um and i hope that you guys uh have some inspiration from this or you get excited about craft shows i know this isn't as in-depth as some of my other craft show videos have been but hopefully it was still fun for you guys um and let me know what other videos you want to see from me below i have a few crochet tutorials really simple projects that i think would be great for craft shows that i'm probably going to attempt to get up soon um so yeah I'm excited for that and I'll talk to you later.